Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 1.11. Evaluate numerical expressions. The essential question for this lesson is, in what order must operations be evaluated to find the solution to a problem? Now, go ahead and turn in your GoMath workbook to page 23, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number 8. Once again, question 8 says to evaluate the numerical expression. For question 8, they give us 14 plus 4 times 4 minus 9. Now, I know that in order to evaluate this expression correctly, I must perform or follow the order of operations. Well, let's review those steps again. Step 1 says to perform anything in parentheses first. Step 2 says multiply or divide from left to right. Step 3 says add or subtract from left to right. So when I go back up to step number one, which is parentheses, and I look back at my expression, I notice that I don't have any parentheses in that expression that's given. So I'm going to move on to step number two. Step two says multiply or divide from left to right. And what I see is there is multiplication in this expression. So I'm going to solve the multiplication first. I'm going to multiply four times four, and that's going to give me 16. Well, I'm going to bring down the rest of the problem. I now have 14 plus 16 minus, or take away, 9. Now, when I look at my order of operations again, I notice that step 3 says add or subtract from left to right. I notice that I have both addition and subtraction in this expression. Well, I know that the rule states I have to perform addition and subtraction from left to right. So I look to see left to right, and I notice that the addition is left to right. It comes first in the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and solve the addition. And when I add 14 plus 16, that's going to take me to 30. Now I end up with 30 minus 9. And since subtraction is the only operation left, I'm going to go ahead and take the 9 away from the 30, and that leaves me with an answer of 21. So when I evaluate this expression following the order of operations, I end up with 21. Now, let's take a look at question number 10. Question 10 says, rewrite the expression with parentheses to equal the given value. So for number 10, they're giving me the expression 2 times 6 divided by 2 plus 1. And what I have to do is I have to rewrite that expression with parentheses so that the value of my expression turns out to be 4. Now the first step I'm going to take is this. I'm going to first of all evaluate the expression without parentheses. Now if I follow the order of operations, I know first of all that I'm looking for parentheses. Well in this expression, there are no parentheses that are given. So then I think, okay, step two says multiply or divide from left to right. And I know that in this expression, I have multiplication and division. And if I'm going to solve those in order from left to right, I'm going to do the multiplication first. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply two times six. And when I multiply two times six, that's going to give me 12. Now I'm going to bring down the rest of my problem. I have 12 divided by two plus 1. Well, once again, order of operations says multiply or divide from left to right, and I know that I have division in this problem, so I'm going to go ahead and work the division next. 12 divided by 2 is going to give me 6, so now I end up with 6 plus 1. Well, the only operation that I have left now is addition, so I'm going to go ahead and add those two numbers together, and 6 plus 1 is going to give me 7. Now I know that 7 is not the value that I'm looking for. I'm trying to get to a value of 4. So I now have to think about how could I place parentheses in my expression so that I could decrease, remember I, I ended up with 7, so that I could decrease the value and get to the value of 4. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to rewrite my expression. They give me 2 times 6 divided by 2 plus 1. 
And once again, I think, where could I place my parentheses so that I could decrease the value? Now, I could first try placing parentheses around my 6 divided by 2. Because I know that 6 divided by 2 is less than 2 times 6. So that would be a good place to start. Now, let's follow the order of operations to solve this problem. I know that the order of operations says to perform what's in parentheses first. So I'm going to go ahead and divide the 6 by 2, and 6 divided by 2 is going to give me 3. So now I'm going to bring down the rest of my problem. I now have 2 times 3 plus 1. Well, I know that the order of operations says that multiplication comes before addition. So I'm going to go ahead and work the multiplication, and I'm going to multiply 2 times 3. Well, I know that 2 times 3 is going to give me 6, and to that I have to still add my 1. Well, 6 plus 1 is going to take me to 7. Now the problem is, that's still not the value that I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to my 4. So placing parentheses around the 6 divided by 2 is not going to work for us. So I'm going to once again rewrite my expression. Now, this time, once again, I have 2 times 6, and it's divided by 2, plus 1. Well, I'm going to try my parentheses this time around the 2 plus 1. Because once again, I know that 2 plus 1, which is now it's in parentheses, is still less than where I started in the beginning, which was 2 times 6. So it should decrease my value. Now, when I follow the order of operations, I know to solve what's in parentheses first. So I'm going to add my 2 plus 1, which is going to give me 3. Now, I'm going to bring down the 2 times 6, and now it's 2 times 6 divided by 3. Well, order of operation says that I have to multiply and divide in order from left to right. So I'm going to go ahead and work the multiplication. I know that 2 times 6 is going to give me 12. Now I end up with 12 divided by 3. Now, when I divide 12 by 3, that's going to take me to 4, which is the value that I'm trying to get to. So what I know is, if I'm going to rewrite the expression with parentheses to equal the given value, I have to put my parentheses around the 2 plus the 1. And that is what my expression should look like if my expression is going to have a value of 4. Now, let's take a look at question number 12. Question 12 is one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and it says, Sandy has several pitchers to hold lemonade for the school bake sale. Two pitchers can hold 64 ounces each, and four pitchers can hold 48 ounces each. How many total ounces can Sandy's pitchers hold? Now, what I know is this. There's some important information here that stands out to me. I know, first of all, that two pitchers can hold 64 ounces each. So what that means to me is this. I know that I have two pitchers that can each hold 64 ounces. Now I also know that there are four pitchers that can hold 48 ounces each. So I'm going to take my four pitchers and multiply that by 48. Now the question says, how many total ounces can Sandy's pitchers hold? So what that total tells me is, I need to now add those two values. Now, what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to place parentheses around my 2 times 64 and my 4 times 48, because I know I have to work the multiplication before I can work the addition. Now, we're going to begin solving this expression using the order of operations. An order of operations says, perform what's in parentheses first. So I'm going to start out with my 2 times 64. When I multiply 2 times 64, that's going to take me to a total of 128. Now I also then have to multiply the 4 times the 48. And when I do that, that's going to take me to 192. Now, I have to drop down my addition sign because I know that I have to now add those two amounts together because, once again, my job is to find the total ounces that Sandy's pitchers can hold. So my last step is to add my 128 
and my 192 together, and when I do that, it takes me to 320. So I know that her pitchers can hold 320 ounces. And I have solved that problem or evaluated that expression following the order of operations. Now, let's take a look at question number 13. Number 13 is another one of our real world problem solving questions and it says, at the bake sale, Jonah sold four cakes for $8 each and 36 muffins for $2 each. What was the total amount in dollars that Jonah received from these sales? Well, as I read through that problem, there are some things that stand out to me as being important. I know, first of all, that Jonah sold four cakes for $8 each. So what that means is I'm going to take the four cakes and I'm going to multiply that by the $8. So four cakes at $8 each. I also know that he sold 36 muffins for $2 each. So I'm going to take my 36 and I'm going to multiply that by the $2. Now the question says what was the total amount in dollars? And when they give me that word total, I know that I'm going to need to add those two amounts together. Now, in order to evaluate this expression correctly, I need to place parentheses around the 4 times the 8 and the 36 times the 2. Now, if I'm going to evaluate this following the order of operations, I know that the order of operations says to perform what's in parentheses first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the 4 times the 8. And when I multiply 4 times 8, that's going to give me 32. So now I have 32 plus, in parentheses, 36 times the $2. Well, I still have parentheses to solve, so I'm going to go ahead and now multiply 36 times 2. And when I multiply 36 times 2, that's going to take me to 72. So I now have 32 plus 72. And when I add 32 plus 72 together, that's going to take me to 104. So what I know is Jonah received $104 from his sales. And we evaluate that, evaluated that expression using the order of operations. Now, let's take a look at your homework questions for tonight. I would like you to complete question number one and question number two as well as numbers 3 through 6. These questions can be found on page 24 in your GoMath workbook. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page I want you to let me know, do you feel like you're number 1 a novice, number 2 an apprentice, number 3 a practitioner, or number 4 an expert? Now, don't forget, your homework questions for tonight will be to complete number 1, and number two, as well as numbers three through six, found in your GoMath workbook on page 24. Have a great evening, and we'll see you at school tomorrow.